listening to Planet Vera Radio. I am Cindy Schwartz, and this is Patient Partners. And on the show today, we're going to talk about a little bit of the credibility on why Jeannie Roller, who is my co-host, she is on Skype talking with me, what our credibility is on why we talk about these different patient and medical matters. And that's because it happened to us. And it happened to our relatives. So a lot of times people in their lifetime, things happen and you just don't want to take it anymore. And you want to figure out a way to help yourself and also help other people not have to go through these heinous atrocities. Ours is in the medical medical community uh, for surgeries, for procedures and stuff. For questions we didn't know to ask or to have answered and for the trust that we, the a supreme trust that we had in our doctors and our hospital staffs and stuff. And that was completely obliterated as far as what we saw happen to us. So that's been our credibility. And now we try to delve into it, try to do as much research, educate ourselves, try to figure out ways to stop this for the next time we have to go to a doctor. Because we aren't doctors, we're not in the medical field, so we have to, if we get sick, we have to go to a doctor. You know, we try, and sometimes we try not to do that because we've been harmed so bad, but, you know, in reality, we kind of have to put that beside and try to figure out how we can all play together in the same sandbox, because for the most part, there are some phenomenal doctors, medical people out there. It's a shame for the rotten eggs in that barrel, but... um, I think we all want to be on the same page. What do you think, Jeannie Roller? I would hope that we all want to be on the same page. I I hope that, you know, patient rights is a vital part of any medical treatment. That's my hope. Okay. And as also informed consent, which we talked about before. So we just want a key to a couple of things here to try to point it out to the listeners that there are doctors that are involved in this that are trying to change things too. And we're just going to uh, highlight a couple of books. I've read all of the books that I'm going to talk about. The first one is Dr. Paul Kalanithi, and he was a neurosurgeon student at Stanford University. And he got carcinoma lung cancer at a very early age. And one of the things that he had in that book and the name of the book is When Breath Becomes Air he talks about what he was trained to say to patients when they were facing surgery to the something to the extent of don't tell the patient all because maybe the patient won't agree to the surgery so I'm going to leave it up to the listeners to maybe kind of look that book up it was pretty famous for a couple of years very good insight he did wind up getting some not so great care for his lung cancer so it happens to doctors too my second book is written by a dr kevin b jones and he is practices in utah as far as i um, know and his book is called What, what doctors cannot tell you and it also talks kind of along the same lines as you know they can't tell you what they don't know i mean that's any of us They can tell you when they don't know it, though, but do they? You know, do they leave that up to you to ask the questions or they just leave it up in the air for you to decide for the surgery? So, Jeannie, you've got a couple you want to talk about. Well, the first book I uh, would like to talk about is Operating Room Confidential. It's by Dr. Paul Wang. He's an anesthesiologist. There is one part in this book where he talks about they like to play pranks or jokes with patient's genitals and this is very concerning i i mean i just my i just it blew my mind that that a surgeon would an anesthesiologist was openly talk about this like it is okay to 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 use patient's genitals as jokes Mm -hmm. that just completely blew my mind i'm sure he's not the only one i'm sure that other or room personnel are doing this too it's sickening it's disgusting and it's criminal there was one on twitter quite recently when they talked about a woman's polyps and they showed it and they actually did photos and stuff on twitter so there's another one i i'm not going to remember the name of the doctor or where it happened but it was just recently maybe a month or two ago you can look it up and it, it happens yes it does and it's happening way more often when yep probably what we ever know about Mm -hmm. and there's also uh, some articles CNN have done about uh, nursing staff taking pictures of odd things on patients their genitals and they use their personal cell phones which they always have on their bodies and they're taking pictures of patients while they're sedated or unconscious and 
nothing's really happening about this. Um, any any medical staff person can have their personal cell phone on them, and they can use them. And you don't know where your pictures are at at this point. It's just it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. And so another book that I have, and this one was, I think it was one of the first ones that I read after looking for help for myself and trying to ease my mind and thinking to myself, do doctors really do what I just had happen to me and what I saw happen to me? This one's called Unaccountable. What Hospitals Won't Tell You and How Transparency Can Revolutionize Healthcare. And it's written by Dr. Morty Macquery, and he is a doctor at Johns Hopkins, which is the thing kind of that clued my eye to read that book. And I'm like, wow, at Johns Hopkins. And they're saying that this stuff is happening there and that doctors are seeing it happen and their hands kind of are tied as to what they can do because we've talked about this on other 10 minute segments like you know these people are seeing this stuff happen why don't they do something to stop and that book is very good talking about that and it also says that there was a doctor mark chasen who was the one of the heads there uh, i don't remember his title at johns hopkins and he did a lot to stop some of the things and therefore they gave him this i believe the ceo position of joint commission which is supposed to be one of the stopgap you know, uh, a brother watching the medical industry so those things don't happen. And I'm just going to throw that out. You know, we are still hearing these things happen. So, I mean, I don't know what Joint Commission's complete part is on all of this, but it is supposed to be one of the um, watch watch groups to stop, you know, to stop these things. My personal experience with Joint Commission is they pass the buck. Okay. Okay. Um, Last week, Misty sent an article from Medical Patient Modesty um, printed by Healthy Women magazine. Hospitals are allowing medical students to perform pelvic exams on unconscious women. Well, one thing I have with this article is unconscious women. Yes, I know it's a women's magazine, but not only are women victims of this, but males are too. Mm -hmm. And but, But the doctor in here who acknowledged this wrong is a female OBGYN. But she said that she went in to talk to the patient and let the patient know how she was involved in that patient's care. Well, it shows that this doctor still does not understand she wasn't involved in the care of this patient. She was involved in using this patient for her own medical education. What she did to the patient did nothing for this patient's care. And that was health. and that was an unconsented for pelvic exam. It was. Okay. Okay, so we have like a minute left. We want to give kudos. She's one of our patient po- uh, partners to Misty Roberts. She is at Medical Patient Modesty on Facebook and also patientmodesty.com. And, um, you know, she gets a lot of these uh, letters, emails we all do from patients that this stuff is happening right here and right now. All over the country, all over the world, on Twitter, it is worldwide people talking about this, that something needs to get done, that we are tired of being, uh, you know, just objects. Yes. We're tired of being objects. Jeannie, quick, we've got a couple of seconds left. Give your Twitter address at, and then we'll say goodbye. At rights for patients. Okay, so it's uh, rights with the numeral four patients. Uh huh. Okay, and, and is medical patient modesty on Facebook? There is another article I found by plaintiffmagazine.com, and they said that sexual assault of hospitalized patients is an epidemic. And this is especially an epidemic because once you become sedated, you become defenseless, and you're relying on people ethics that you have no idea if they are ethical or not so this is very concerning Mm -hmm. that so much of this is happening whether you are just being exposed unnecessarily or you are actually having physical sexual assault being done to you yeah and we highlighted one that happened in arizona how the girl was pregnant i think Mm -hmm. it's been most people probably have seen it so it's that's why we talk about it That's why we talk about it. We're not medical people, but we've seen the stuff happen. We've had it happen to us, and it needs to stop. It just absolutely needs to stop. It does. So I mean, it's it's scary. Everyone needs their own advocate with them, whether it be their wife, their husband, someone, someone they pay, just someone. They need them with them at all times during the hospital stay. You've been listening to Panel Bureau Radio. Please stay tuned. 